بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم آئی ایم سید عاکف شاہ لیکچرر فائنینس ایٹ انسٹیٹیوٹ آف بزنس اسٹڈیز پہاٹ یونیورسٹی آف سائنس اینڈ ٹیکنالوجی ٹائٹل آف دس کورس از بزنس ریسرچ میتھڈس اینڈ دا کورس کوڈ فار دس سبجیکٹ از ایم ایس تھری ہنڈریڈ ٹویلو دس از لیکچر نمبر ٹوینٹی تھرڈ اینڈ دا ٹاپک فار ٹو ڈیز ڈسکشن از ایلیمنٹس آف اے ریسرچ ڈیزائن انڈر دی ایمریل آف وچ Specifically, this lecture will address the time horizon element, researcher interference element, and the study setting as an element of research design. So, dear student, this is basically a complete research diagram, and we have already covered the first six steps of this research diagram, which occupies series of lectures. We are currently on step number seven, where we have to design our research model on the basis of theoretical framework under which we have identified the important variable pertinent to our research problem as dependent, independent, moderating or intervening variable. The basic purpose of research design is to set the ground and gather the data so that we can make hypothesis testing by analyzing that data with the help of that specific research design or methodology. So we have already covered the purpose of study, type of investigations and unit of analysis in my previous few lectures. So therefore the specific emphasis of this lecture for discussing the element of research design is to discuss the time horizon of the research design. We can have the extent to which a researcher should interfere with the model or the setting and environment. And finally, the study setting will be the final agenda of this lecture. Let us discuss the first element of research de design under this lecture, which is the time horizon. Basically, the time horizon emphasis or element of research design enables the researchers to know about either he is doing a cross-sectional study or a longitudinal study which is also known as panel data analysis. So first of all let's discuss the cross-sectional studies. The other name or the specific term may be used for cross-sectional study as one-shot study. As the name narrates that we have to gather the data related to this study at a specific point in time and this will not be this data will not be gathered for any other time period. So a cross-sectional study or a research work is a study can be done in which the data are gathered just for once as already narrated. This is a one-shot study, therefore the data related, the variables are the problem of interest shall be collected only single time, perhaps over a period of days or weeks or months, whatever the time period it will occupy to gather the data for a specific time period in order to answer your research question. So let us take a, an example and another narration related with the cross-sectional study which is data were collected from the stock brokers as an example what a cross-sectional studies looks like. Data were collected from the stock brokers between April and June of the last year to study their concerns in a turbulent stock market. Like there is a disturbing stock market position might be because of the macroeconomic factors and the researcher is interested to take the concern and behavior of the stock broker while working in such kind of turbulent stock market specifically for June and April. So here we can see that data has to be collected at a one point in time and therefore it is called as a cross-sectional design of study. Let us take another example. Here it is a drug company desirous of 
investing in the research for a new headache pill this company is going to make a new headache pill but before that con conducted a survey among the headache people who have headache to see how many of them would be interested in trying the new pill now once again this kind of study is expressing or elaborating the researchers intention to collect the data only for the single time from the headache people in order to know about their behavior and mental setup or inclination towards the purchase of the new pill or drug either they will respond as they are interested to try the new pill by the drug company for headache or they will be least interested in trying to to um, uh, apply the new drug or purchase the new drug on their selves rather they will be most uh, inclined toward using the same old fashioned medicine what they have been using in past so such kind of studies are known as cross sectional studies because this is a one shot or cross sectional study to assess the likely demand for the new product from the headache people let us take an another example with respect to the to those students or researcher who are inclined towards the finance financial analysis or financial researches so a financial analyst is interested to know about the debt to equity ratio of oil and gas sector industry in pakistan for 2019 so here a financial analyst is interested to know about the debt to equity ratio of all the companies in the oil and gas sector in pakistan in and this study is only specifically for one time period that is year 2019 therefore the similar companies data for year 2018 or year 2028 will not be collected rather this study has focused specifically on one time period therefore it is known as a cross sectional study or one shot study however there might be possible that we have 10 companies 20 companies or whatever the number is which are coming under the umbrella of oil and gas sector in industry so the researcher may select either the sample of this 20 or 10 company or will have to take the total number of companies and then to find out debt to equity ratio of all the companies in year 2007 sorry 2019 for all those companies which are coming under oil and gas sector or industry in pakistan so the researcher will study all the companies coming under oil and gas industry for year 2019 and the related balance sheet as the data pertaining to debt to equity belongs to the balance sheet of the company to aggregate the data pertaining to debt to equity ratio and finally the researcher will set a benchmark ratio the research uh, of this financial analyst who is interested to find out the debt to equity ratio of the companies pertaining to oil and gas sector of pakistan in year 2019 is to set a benchmark ratio for what benchmark is known as a standard with the with which the rest of the companies may compare its financial ratio which is debt to equity so that to know that either they are going according to the industry standard and benchmark or not and if they are not going according to the industry benchmark they will have to adopt certain policy so that they may be in in like or in uh, in a similar fashion to adopt the debt to equity financing in the companies because if you follow the particular industry benchmark that will help you in your financial matters and to increase the profitability of the company now let's discuss the second study nature regarding to the time horizon which is called as a longitudinal study as the long states that we have to gather data for number of time period or number of years of study studying people or phenomena at more than one point in time like we can also compare in in the previous financial analyst example we can calculate debt to equity ratio for year 2019 for oil and gas sector industry and as well as we can 
make it a panel study or longitudinal study where we can incorporate or collect the similar nature data pertaining to debt to equity for year 2018-19 and then year 2020 after its completion. So if the similar variables data has to be collected for a number of time period then such kind of studies are known as longitudinal studies. So the data are gathered at two different points in time. Let's take another example. The researcher might want to study the employee's behavior. The researcher is interested to, to study the employee's behavior before and after. Before and after of what? Change in the top management. The top management is going to be changed in a particular company. So what was the employee's behavior before that change? By behavior, we means their motivation level, employees' uh, uh, interaction with each other, their uh, supervisor and subordinate relationship, and as well as job satisfaction might come in the employee's behavior while they are working in any organization. So the researcher is interested in the employee's behavior before the change in the top management. So he might collect the data before there is a change in the top management and then the, then the researcher can also collect after the top management has been changed and the purpose is to understand the effect of change in the management on employees behavior like previously they were motivated towards job right now after the change they are motivated or not previously they were having satisfied uh, job work environment and after the top management change either they are satisfied or dissatisfied so we have to collect at two different point in time therefore such kind of studies are known as longitudinal studies let's sum up the longitudinal studies these uh, uh, as we have to take data for two different point in time or more than two times therefore it is more longitudinal time takes more time it's time consuming as well as maximum efforts needs to be put in and these are also costly than the cross-sectional studies however a well-planned longitudinal study could identify the cause and effect relationship in a better way than the cross-sectional study because the data have been collected in different points in time and usually the panel data studies are preferable then one short studies however there are certain research problems which for which uh, the cross-sectional studies match more or pertinent than the longitudinal studies so this all decision depends upon the researchers attitudes and the need for the problem to be resolved which is under investigation let us take the another example of longitudinal study where one could study the sales volume of a product before and after an advertisement so once again the, here is before and after effect so the researcher sh uh, will definitely collect the sales volume before the advertisement and then sales volume after the advertisement and then to provide it other environment changes have to be uh, have not impacted on the result we assume that one could attribute that the final conclusion might be like one could attribute the increase in sales volume if any to the advertisements so they can infer or they can utilize the longitudinal studies technique or time horizon to study such kind of phenomena to develop the relationship or finding the nexus between the advertising and the uh, advertising and the sales volume of the product as mentioned in this case sales volume is dependent variable and advertisement is independent variable because we would like to increase the advertisement and then to realize its impact on sales volume before and after the advertisement so when there is a before and after advertisement phenomena such kind of studies are known as longitudinal studies because we are going to take or collect and aggregate the data pertaining to the relevant variable for more than one point in time. Let's discuss the second element of the research design which is extent of the extent of the researcher's interference. Like whether the researcher 
model requires the researcher to interfere in the environment or it doesn't require at all. The first uh, case is the minimum interference by the researcher. It's, uh, correlational studies normally does not require the researchers to modify the environment or change the investigation or research setting. Because let's say if the researcher is interested to find out the relationship between the uh, advertisement and the sales volume of the company and the research question says that if there is an increase in advertisement there could be corresponding uh, uh, increase in the sales volume uh, to find out is there any relationship between advertising and sales. So such kind of research question can be addressed uh, with the minimum interference by the researcher in the research model. So the researcher is not required to modify the environment or change the behavior or environmental factors to find out the cause and effect. Since this is a correlational study and the researcher is interested to develop the nexus or association between two or three variables, therefore sometimes the researchers are not required to interfere and such kind of studies are termed as minimum interference correlational studies. There could be some other uh, studies which requires moderate interference and this interference is to set the environment or uh, to change the setting of the model so that the cause and effect can be observed. Like in the previous case we were if, uh, trying to find out the top management's change and then to study the behavior of uh, advertisement on the uh, sales volume or on the employee's behavior as well. Like if there is a change in the top management, either the advertisement will have good impact on the sales volume or similarly we can also moderately interfere to change the top management and then to discuss or check the environment uh, or the employee's motivation level and behavior in the organization. Similarly, we have certain studies where the researcher is excessively required to interfere in the environment. Like for example, in a medical research, if, uh, if a researcher is interested to evaluate the stress environment and an adverse situation while working in the hospital or in, in any emergency ward. So the researcher can have different kind of environments for different group of people one may be having the doctor's facility with the nurses available. One might have the doctor's facility, but the doctors itself help them and not ask or approach by the nurses. And similarly, there could be an, another environment where the doctors are not available at all. So such kind of group study or specific lab experiments requires the researchers to excessively interfere in such studies in order to find that whether there is relationship or cause and effect relationship between two variables. Last but not the least, the element of research design where we can uh, set our study setting. One is known as a contrived environment versus non-contrived environment. What is contrived environment? It is a controlled environment. Uh, we can also say the artificial setting of such environment to perform your studies and such kind of contrived environment is applicable usually for cause and effect studies. Like for example, if the researcher is interested to find out the employee's behavior while they are working and if there is any contingency or emergency situation or an alarm going on in the organization and the researcher has made a simulation or an artificial emergency environment in the organization to check the employee's behavior, how they are going to respond in such kind of emergency cases will be considered as a contrived study because the environment or the setting, organizational setting is artificial and designed by the researchers to observe the behavior of the employees while working in an emergency situation. Similarly, there could be another setting, study setting environment named as non-contrived. Usually, these kind of studies are conducted in the natural work environment research. For example, 
if a researcher is interested to know about the punctualities of the uh, employees while they are working or the researcher is interested might be to see the behavior of the organizational employees with their clients while they are working in a natural environment. So the top management might have selected certain independent teams regarding which the rest of the employees are unaware that they are actually observing their natural work environment or the way they are doing work. So when there is such kind of natural work environment where the uh, observees even uh, does not know about the research activities going on, so they are actually working in a natural way, in a natural environment. So such kind of studies are known as non-contrived studies. We do correlational and regressional based regression based studies in financial finance related topics while as we have taken an example of a, a financial analyst who might be interested to find out let's suppose the relationship between debt to equity ratio with the profitability of the company that is earning per share let's suppose it is in another variable. So if the researcher is trying to find out the nexus or relationship between debt to equity ratio with the earning per share, so such kind of simple plain correlational studies does not require any contrived environment. Rather you can go to the natural work environment, collect the financial statement of the company and you can find out debt to equity ratio or you, another way around you can also calculate the debt to equity ratio and then to find out correlation uh, between these two variables. You can also perform regression analysis and other descriptive statistic as well. So after collecting the data, the data may be analyzed with whatever uh, requirement of the researcher is. However, it does not require any specific contrived environment for the researchers to be developed before conducting such study. So I hope that now the elements of research designs are clear to, the, to you. These were uh, some of the elements uh, and which, which needs to be designed properly after the theoretical framework has been developed and a hypothesis uh, have also been established so that the research question and research objectives in order to achieve the research question and research objectives one should design the research study in the way it is required by the researcher. And those were certain some of the elements which could help the researcher to understand the study phenomena and then to use appropriate research design. Thank you very much for listening to this lecture. If you have any question, you can ask on KCMS or another way around, you can also email me on my official email address as mentioned in the footer. Good luck for the day. Allah Hafiz.